Hey, Ms. Marquardt. Hey. So we're going to be doing a reading lesson today, and we're actually going to be talking about three ways to read a book. So wow. there's three ways. That's pretty weird, right? Yeah, you I didn't know that. probably only thought there was one way to read a book, mm -hmm. the way most people are familiar with, just reading the words. Mm -hmm. But there's actually three. And those three, those three ways are reading the pictures, reading the words, and retelling the story. So the first way to read a book is reading the pictures. I love reading the pictures. That's great. And you've probably been doing this since you were old enough to open a book, right? Mm -hmm. And your mom probably still does this when she picks up a book. Mm -hmm. And maybe even in your grandma and grandpa, mm -hmm. right? You can learn a lot of information just by reading the pictures. See, I have this book called Ocean. It's about the ocean. I love the ocean. And if I open this page, I see a lot of fish. I see that they're swimming in the ocean. I see that they, some of them have spots. Some of them are long. Some of them have stripes. Ooh, and that one looks kind of funny. It does look kind of funny, <laughs> huh? Look at his fin on the top is like way bigger than this guy's fin. Do you see that? Wow. Yeah. Boy, you can learn a lot just by looking at the pictures. You can. You can really learn a lot. So the second way that we can read a book is by reading the words. And that's probably the way you're used to doing reading. And that's how I'm used to doing reading. So I'm actually going to go back and read what it says here. Because when I read a book just by reading the pictures, I kind of make up my own story, right? Mm -hmm. But when I actually read the words, I'm reading the story that the author intended for me to read. So I'm learning what they meant for me to read, basically. So let's see what it says. First of all, it says, what is a fish? All fish have fins for swimming and gills for breathing underwater. Wow, already more information than I came up with. Than just, just from the pictures. Yeah. Fish also have their own suits of armor. Most are covered in overlapping scales like tiles on a roof. Some just have extra tough skin. They are slimy so that they can glide swiftly through the water. Wow. That was a lot of information, wasn't it? In just a, a short amount of text, I learned so much more than I did just by reading the pictures. And we wouldn't have known if we didn't read the words. Yeah. So reading the words is very important. And the third way to read a book is by retelling the story. So you can retell a story that you read on your own, or you can retell a story that you listened to, that somebody read to you, um, any kind of story. You could even retell a movie, or you could retell a TV show. Um, there's lots of ways you can retell a story even if you didn't read it. So retelling a story is really important because it helps build your comprehension. And that means it helps you understand what you read and remember it. And not only does it help you remember what you read, it helps you teach other people. Yeah. So if I was going to retell Miss Marquardt this story, I might have to remember, maybe not every single thing that I read, because that would be hard. I didn't memorize it. But I'm going to tell you whatever I can remember. Okay. Okay. I remember that um, fish breathe through their gills, mm -hmm. that they have scales, and that they have really tough skin. I remember you saying suits of armor. Oh yeah. That was really cool. Nice. So when we both retell, we even comprehend and remember even more. Mm -hmm. That's great. So I could probably even retell a story to mom or dad at home. Oh yeah. Or maybe a brother or sister. Yep. My sure dog. Could. You could tell a story to your, your stuffed animal on your bed. You could retell a story to anything or anyone. Why not? Inanimate object or human. Dog, cat. So Mrs. Grant. Yeah. I brought my own favorite book. Ooh. It's Pete the Cat. And I was hoping maybe I could share with you how I read the picture. I would love to hear it. Well, I haven't read this book yet, <laughs> but I already found my favorite picture. And it's a picture of Pete the cat, and there's a whole bunch of cupcakes on the, on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that when I flipped through the pages, there was another picture mm -hmm. of cupcakes, but there were less cupcakes. Oh. And so I'm guessing that as I read the pictures, there's something going on where the cupcakes go missing. Yeah. 
and it's called Pete the Cat and the Missing Cupcakes. Wow. When I look at the words. Miss Marquardt, you told me so much information just by looking at the pictures. Do you think you should do strategy number two and see if you can learn even more by reading the words? Sure. I'll start at the beginning and just maybe okay. read a couple pages. A couple pages, yeah. So the first page says, Pete and Gus were as busy as could be. They were getting ready for the cupcake party. It started at three. <laughs> I love cupcakes. Me too. <laughs> they were making cupcakes for everyone. Pete and Gus counted them just for fun. They had 10 when they were done. Well, I'm going to stop there, Mrs. Grant, because I want to try to retell the story so far. Go for it. All right. This is a story about a cat and his friend Gus, and they were making cupcakes for a party. Mm -hmm. And by the time I finished reading, they had 10 cupcakes. Nice. And Ms. Marquardt, so. you retold that story before you even got to the end of the book. And I bet if you went through that whole book and stopped and retold yourself what happened every few pages, your ability to remember what happened would probably be so great. That's a great strategy. Yeah, and even if you're reading a chapter book, I bet you could do the same thing. Honestly, even better because chapter books are bigger with more words and that's a lot more stuff to remember. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna try these strategies oh, when I read. That's great. 